Okay, what's up? How's it going? Today, you alive? Okay, cool. Let's make a game. Today, I wanted to make 12-year-old me very happy. Because as a kid, I used to love RPG games. I used to hunt down RPG games on the iOS store. Like a, like a fucking nerd. And I... <laughs> And I wanted to like, with all this AI generated content, I thought it was something fun to do. And I was like, let me make one of these like, choose your adventure games. And I'll make the front end with React and everything from the characters to the companions, the loot, all this stuff is gonna be AI generated. And we're gonna have a little game loop where the character, whether you've, we've created a, and we're gonna AI generate the images as well whether that you've created a dungeon game or whatever, the scenarios that come up, you'll have different choices. And these will all be uh, choices that we use Rilama 2 to generate. And I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be interesting. And I think in the end, we're gonna, it's, I'm gonna call it anything RPG, which is cool. I, I was like, let me think of a name. And I was like, you know what? The point of this is that it can do anything. That's the point, right? So fuck it. Let's just call it anything <laughs> RPG. So if you're not thinking of the idea, so so what is this? What is this? I have I don't know why I have Discord open. One second. Okay. So let's think about what this actually is. So I want to have an idea where the Hold on a second. Let me open up. Hold on a second. So I want to have an idea where this is. This text is huge. I was like, I need the people to see it. Okay. So this is a choose your. This is how I set up my projects. It's like this is a. I have to. I have to set up the scaffolding, right? I have to set up what is exactly is happening here. Choose your adventure game. What does the user do? The first thing is I want to have the first frame is we're just like, it's like after you say play game, whatever. First frame is boom. What is your character? Describe your character. You describe your character. You describe your hero. Thinking, what would 12 year old me want? Oh, what would 12 year old me be like? This is the coolest fucking thing ever. Because when I was a kid, I would like, I'd love Fallout and these like New Vegas, obviously. And these like games where you gotta, it's you just like, there's limitless possibility, you know? It's very in Skyrim and things like that. Uh, maybe a little less in Skyrim, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a little linear, but. Um, so you first describe the hero, and after you get the hero, we're gonna get we're gonna get assets for the hero. So we want every time you create a hero, your hero is gonna have an image that we're gonna generate, a name, and I think that's it for now. And attributes. So I want to figure out how we're gonna do this. We might just like HP. Uh, you know, shit like that. HP. Um, but like, we're going to, I want to see if we can generate what attributes would actually be good. Um, and uh, like, I'm pretty sure. Wait, what? <laughs> but uh, I want to figure out what attributes would be good. So like HP magic, like I want to have the AI generate what would be interesting in terms of like, like what would actually be good attributes to generate here all right cool so get assets for the hero and uh and yeah no uh no no thank you offhand ft i appreciate it though. um all right so so we have so that's going to be like when we generate our hero that's going to be the first thing this is all going to be reactive so we're going to have like it's going to be a web game web-based game and then we needed to find, okay, so the first thing, so the second thing is 
we're gonna describe the like the environment, the world, the world. So there's gonna be a world building screen where we generate what the world's gonna be. And I wanna have like a background that always exists. We can see like a background that's like kind of like opaque or whatever. I wanna see how much we can push this uh, AI generation. So we're gonna describe the world. We're gonna get assets for the world. I think this is just gonna be an image. And we'll, we'll, we'll name the world. We'll name the world as well. I think that's probably fine now. Uh, and maybe we could we can always save the description of what the world actually is. All right. So the the third screen. This is before the game loop. So we're gonna get into the game loop after this. We don't know every game, even these turn based games like the one we're about to make. Even though it's not like you know, there's not really a frame rate here. Every game is a game loop. That's kind of what makes it game and i'll talk about that in a sec so third thing i want to i want to have the scenario and and all by the way i want to make all of these things something where you could generate it yourself but for now i want to have the scenario something that the user inputs so the user is going to input these are all like the first there's going to be three prompts and that's it you just, as a user, you just say three things you want. What do you want your hero to be? What do you want your world to be? What do you want your scenario to be? Scenarios like a dungeon, like a hero lurking in a dungeon and has to save the princess and get all the fucking crypto. Like our game is like to win the game. Oh yeah, we have to set up. We'll talk about that in the game. But to win the game, maybe you have to get all the crypto. <laughs> that that's actually fucking hilarious. Like, imagine a game where I think the future is all RPG games are going to be sort of sorts of games where you have to in order to win, you literally have to fucking get all the crypto. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. All right. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So, you ready? Let's do it. Okay. So the game loop. I want to think of the game loop here. So, like, we're going to have to have actions. Or we're gonna have to have like an event statement or like a um story a story statement so it's like the beginning of it let's actually number these things so this will be something like something that describes this is way too big tech I think that describes where you are and what to do. Actually, we'll uh, we'll actually have an introduction story statement. It's a better way of calling this. This is definitely a better way of calling this. Like a story event. So it's going to be something where we tell the user like, hey, this is your scenario. This is you're this character. This is like this is what's happening right now. You just entered the dungeon. You got to get your fucking crypto. This is really just a this is a game for the tech bros. It's a game for all you tech bros out there. <laughs> all right. So something that describes okay, so the story event is gonna be the first thing that pops up. And it's describe where you are and like what you in in essentially and summarize what's happening and give you some choices so two and you're always going to be able to see oh actually it's going to output loot and companion options because i wanted to i want to ai generate 
loot items randomly and companion like we're gonna have like a companion and a loot event and then we're gonna have like let's actually define different event types so like let's have an event type that's like loot companion fight um we don't do we need to say fight we can also ai generate stuff like that we can do this for now and then we'll just say ra like random like general just general thing and then we'll like maybe say 20 percent of them will be or like 10 five percent will be loot one percent will be companion you know something like that 20 percent's fight and the rest is like general and then we'll just ai generate these things uh as the player continues okay so the output we're gonna have loot and companions um and then like winning the fight or some shit and we're gonna have a fight to loop so if you're in a fight that'll start a loop if you're in a i think that's it the only sub loop we'll have pretty sure and then you can obviously fucking die if you lose a fight. And then I want to have fights in everything. Because you can have this. You could say, like, you want your scenario to be, like, you're just in a city, like, just sucking and fucking. And you're just like, yeah, this is the sucking and fucking game. So this is a rated R stream. If you're, if you're weak, please leave. This is a 10x stream. Only for the strong. All right, so that's the game loop starts with creating this event, and then two, we output event items or event objects. So loot companions. I think it's just loot and companions. But three, we give the choices, the user choices. One user choice can be like, let me think. What's like a user choice? Well, we'll, we'll actually, we'll just have the AI generate the user choices. I just realized we got to find a way to randomize it. I also realized that. Yeah, we got to find a way to randomize it. I think we can do that. We can like tell it to think of random shit. <laughs> we could do something like that. Okay, so give the user choices. We could say like, yeah, just user makes a choice. And oh, we have to, so the, if there's loot items, if we have to figure, we have to figure out the logic for this, for if loot items or companions can help show those options and then have the user make a choice and then we'll just re and then after they make the choice of a result event is the event that happens after the choice so event yeah result event and then update the user's attributes based on the event so if like they die, <laughs> like we'll have different, like the, whether the game continues is based on how their attributes update. We might just always make it HP. I think we could do that. Yeah, I think we can always just make it HP. So we'll just update the users like HP or some shit every, at the, re at the end of the result or at the end of the event. All right, cool. So and the uh cool i think we could just fucking build it all right now i think it's actually good i kind of like this i'm trying to think is there anything else that we need to do here i think this is the logic yeah and then we'll we'll like store a state for the loot items so in the story event we need to like output different we need to have a prompt for getting 
possible loot or getting possible companions if um that's a thing like we'll have like another you'll see how it works <laughs> you'll see how it works that's the text-based adventure it's a choose your adventure uh rpg and then you you pick your your hero in the beginning all right realized it would be nice if we oh yeah we want to make this auto gen if we have time an auto gen feature for the hero an auto gen feature for the world and auto gen feature so just a way that you don't have to type it at prompt in and we can just auto prompt that because we can do that all right cool let's get into the code so now we get into the code. So you can skip that if you're just if you don't if you're gen z and you don't you can't fucking focus on anything does that sound familiar skip to you're like I, know, I can't fucking pay attention to the process of things and planning <laughs> let's get to the action this is the coding hey if you're gen z just don't even watch this honestly like like, I, like there's no point <laughs> all right so let's go to uh yeah i'm using vite let's get into coding we're well, using React. If you don't know about React, let me fucking tell you about React. React's great. I love React. I actually, I unironically love React. Part of the thing I, I love about React is that it's it's super simple. And it's the only, because most frameworks suck, just being totally honest. There's, there's too much, like, either hand-holding or there's too much, like, people are too... Um, too much scaffolding happening and i think the like react has that perfect middle ground where you get to kind of you get to really really just does one thing and it's state management and components are really just downstream from that the hook system is downstream from that everything is to make it so state management is better it just it gives you functionality rather than um sort of kind of tells you what to do if you kind of catch my drift Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of all this this stuff here. Shouldn't curse as much. All right, so listen, we're we're building this front end real quick. There's gonna be this, we're, we're, it's gonna be a little silly. This front end. This isn't gonna be like you're used to like really nice looking front ends. I get it. This isn't gonna be that great. I'm also gonna create a components folder components folder open this up let's have a component called like we'll have a game component as you guys why are these all called jsx i don't, I don't, I don't want to do that but we're gonna have a game component and actually i'm gonna have a styles folder we're gonna put my styles i have sass here I can't go away from SAS. I don't know how Vite works. Let me just look that up. It's my first time using Vite. And I just add a SAS plugin pretty easily. Are they gonna make that hard for me? Okay, it looks pretty pretty simple. All right, so Yarn, I, did I use Yarn when I set this up? No, I didn't. Okay. Let's install SAS. Oh, hold on. Does it just work immediately when you do that? I just want to make sure. Oh, let me look up um the React version of this. Not for view. Let's see how this works. Oh, it's built in support. Oh, okay. I don't have to add anything, even though I just did. All right, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Is this running? Yeah, it's running right there. Nice. Okay. So I didn't need to do that, I don't think, but whatever. Okay. So we're going to have a game component. It's going to be where we manage the game screens. So. 
let's set this up. Let's realize this is what are these? Yeah. Nice. This is gonna be where we set up the game screens, and I guess we'll do the logic for the game loop in here. I think that should be fine. Let's have a game, big old class. We're gonna put a ton of stuff in there. Are they importing? No, just normally. I gotta know with all the ES module stuff, how, how it is all this stuff actually working. So let's go into the styles folder and then get a game SCSS fi full file. Can't fucking speak. <laughs> and let's get game. Oh, it's gonna be fucking cool. Uh, <laughs> dude, I love RPGs. I don't know why. I know why. I think there's something cool about like being able to do whatever you want, you know. At least that's what I loved about those growing up. And this can be, you can actually make this a hundred. And you're like, what, Jared? Why aren't you just AI generating all the code? Because this is educational. This is for for the people. Okay. I'm not just gonna AI generate everything. That's not life's not AI generated. Okay. Life is an AI generated. That's the main thing you got to learn from these streams. Life is an AI generated. Life is not AI generated. So you got to like at, at some point you're going to have to fucking learn how to code. I'm like just yelling at a person that doesn't exist. At some point you just going to have to learn HTML and CSS. And that's not even the hard part, the full stack, easy part. To anyone who's like, oh, dude, CSS is hard. It's like, you're, you're silly. You're a very silly person. You know what I just realized would be really cool? Once we get the world, oh yeah. I, by the way, I'm using RunPod and Llama 2 to generate everything. RunPod has really nice image generation capabilities. So I'm gonna, I think I have to log in. Now I'm just going to go to the endpoints because I have my API key, which I will change. Don't think that, don't think you just get my API key by just seeing this. Don't think that. All right. What, what's going on here? Okay. Is this the same? Yeah, I was about to say, this looks different. All right. For now, First thing we're going to be doing is actually generating images. So let's try. I forgot which one of these is good. Stable Diffusion XL is kind of shitty. This anything one was pretty good. Let me try this. Yeah, what happens if I... Oh, I got to add my token. Okay, let's, let's see what this looks like. I'm going to use this. This is... I think this is like an anime looking one, if I, if I remember right. Okay, what's this image? Oh my God. It's the longest URL ever. Okay. That's this image out. Now it looks like shit. Okay, let's not try that. Let's get a stable diffusion XL. Let's see, let's try, try this one out. I need to get it perfect. Because this, so we're going to first, I mean, we're going to do some more HTML and CSS before we get into RunPod. But I want to just test out some images here because I want to see which images are actually good. I'm just a coder. Nobody. Okay. That, I mean, yeah, that's it. It's not an eight story building. Right? Is my, yeah, no, I mean, it's way more than eight. Yeah. But whatever. It. it looks better. All right. Well, I guess we use the Stable Diffusion XL version they have. If you don't know, Stable Diffusion is, it's long story short, it's an AI where you can generate images. If you need to know more, this isn't the video right now. I'll do that on another video. 
I'll talk about that on another video. Right now, we got a lot to do. We got a lot. To, I got to remember, I'm trying to make this one a little shorter. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, I got to test this out. I just want to make sure this there's nothing, none, no Tom Fuller happening in this app. It will look like there's some Tom Fuller. Oh, I didn't save any of these files. I didn't import anything. Okay. Why would I just assume everything's going to work when I didn't implement? Okay. Let's import. So we just made a component. Oops. And we're going to say get the relative folder with this component and let's get the, the game file. And then let's import game. Remember, it's a default export. So that means we can import it like this. We're not exporting uh, multiple modules here. Okay. Oh, the file doesn't exist. So we got to say .js next. Then, oh, components. Okay. I don't see game anywhere. Okay, cool. It's right there. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> We're done. All right. So now let's go and set up this actual game and get rid of all this default CSS we have. None of that's useful. Um, let me see. Did, did that like automatically update? Oh, no, it's in the index. Anything? Do I need anything here? Do I need anything here? Mm. I'll actually keep that. That's fine. I'll keep this too. I don't want that. We definitely don't want to auto update buttons or H1s. Look at those extra padding here. Is that like, where is that? Oh, is that because of the H1? Okay. All right. So I want to see. What happens when we make this background color white? Nice. It looks like it's not on the whole screen. There's like a little bar at the top. Let's make this app. App. Bars like that just, just annoy the crap out of me. All right. Where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? Okay. Oh, it's in the the game. Okay. What? You see, yeah, you. you the shit. All right, <clears throat> so sorry, I'm like playing around with it. Okay, so we have our game. So now, this background, we're actually gonna update this. So for now, we're gonna give this like some sort of like. We're going to have like a sort of play game screen here. So we can have like a nice little background where it's like kind of cute, where we're like, where it's like, hey, you, this is anything RPG. It can be anything you want. And let me think. So let's think about what color scheme we want. Find some colors. So color palette generator coolers that's cute i don't know coolers i've never used coolers before oh is this is not a thing that i can just use okay let's go 
All right. Uh, so it just, oh, just gets random shit when you do that. Is there a way for me to like give it some input here? Okay, that's kind of interesting. Can I like say what I want though? Whoa, fuck. <laughs> okay, I'll just pick until I like see colors I like. I'll just pick this color. Not maybe not the best way to do it. I actually kind of like this one. Let's use this. We don't we don't got a lot of time. We gotta just pick a fucking color and go with it. Uh <laughs> maybe it's not the best way. Maybe not the best way to go. Um this one's probably a good color. A good on on header color. Okay, so let's get the logo. Anything RPG. And then for anything RPG, we're going to have this logo here be this color and that, wait, why is there that thing at the top? Hold on a sec. That annoy the shit out of me. Let's see. Oh, this is pushing it up. Box sizing, border box. That do it. Let's go. Oh, whoops. It says, why is it telling me it said invalid DOM property class? Did you mean class name? Okay, let's get, let's figure out what's going on with these styles. The body's pushed down. What the fuck? <laughs> Margin and padding zero. Like the least important thing ever. I'm like so OCD about certain things that I'll just like, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing this for 10 hours. I'm just kidding. All right. So... the fuck see view transition transition anyway um I, I i this is annoying but i'm just gonna do this i just i don't have time for this right now <laughs> yeah whatever I'll look it up after. I, I want to like actually get things done. So, okay. <laughs> like, it's like, anybody, what, what did a famous person say? Anybody got time for that? Okay. So, let's actually find a font. <laughs> let's go to, oh, I've been using Cubano for like everything. But actually, let's go to Google Fonts. I like going to Google Fonts to find my fonts. Google Fonts is the best. Love Google Fonts. All right, let's go. 
Um, and also, there's not like the best fonts actually here, but there's okay fonts. There's good enough fonts. Oh, when you're just testing ideas out. We're just testing ideas out here. I want to get like an old timey looking font. I want to do something like that. Yeah, like some shit like this. That looks a little weird. Anything RPG. It's fucking weird. Never know. Okay, let's find. What's like the vibes of anything RPG? It's like old timey. It's kind of like you go to like an old tavern. You go to an old, old looking tavern to find any, anything RPG. Let's see. And, and everyone's just chilling there, having a good old time. Let's see. What the fuck am I saying? All right. Let's see. Ooh, I kind of like this. But I want like a like a kind of dungeony look. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is that? That's like a horror horror one. I can look at fonts all day. Let's get this one. Yeah, yeah. Pixely Vi Sans. Okay. I like that. I like that. See, it matters. It's like it seems like it doesn't matter when you're when you're looking at things like this, but it matters. It matters. All right. Oh no, I'm not gonna download it. I'm gonna get this font from uh what the fuck am I gonna get it from? By the way, if you're wondering, oh, what just happened? Go search it. Pixel. I don't want to download it. All right, let's select all these. Select, select, select. And then let's get this link. Then let's copy this link. Okay, so now we can just go to the HTML file. And then we'll add the link to the HTML. I want to see if they... uh they do any if they auto update when you update the links here maybe not a lot of people don't a lot of like auto updating scripts don't uh, do that let's see if Vite does that okay <clears throat> so i'm gonna use it how do you use it what's it called Pixel, I think I also picked Monster Ad or whatever by accident. Then import. Yeah, like this. Okay. I accidentally did Monster Ad. It's fine. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. Let's do the font family and let's use this. Let's see what it looks like in here. Okay. It's kind of cute. Pretty good big font size. Let's make this like 24. Oh, we're just send send this up. It's actually not a big. I don't know why I said that one. Font size 64. And fucking thing came back. Hold a sec. Oh, it became. It's the H1 tag. H1 tags pushing it up. Okay. Problem resolved. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me why that works. Okay, let's um give this a line height. I'll give it like a, a little too big. 110. Okay, percent. Why percent? Fuck, cause fuck you. That's why. Okay, let's do. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna display flex everything in here, and I'm gonna line items. So it's gonna be so actually. In this game, so this header, we're gonna have to have a component for the main game screen. So this is like the play screen. 
and we're gonna default show the play screen and actually we'll have a state we'll actually start doing some some react so i'm gonna have a state and think about this when you're setting up games where you, where you have to kind of figure out what your your beginning states are and then at what point you're gonna get into your your tick your next ticks your your, your loop so you have to think about like how, like where, and also what state is going to be global and which is going to be um, sort of maintained in the, uh, in the, in the state of whatever class you're in, you know, whatever class, like, like our objects going to control their own state. It's kind of what I'm saying. Okay. So let's say play screen, say screen. You know what we can do is we can just have because really the play screen's its own thing. So we can just have split play screen have its own state. We'll say start obviously default to true. And then we'll say based on and what we'll have we'll import the, the play screen here. Let's create a play screen right here. And we'll just do this play screen. And obviously we'll give play screen its own file. It doesn't probably, no, I, I think it will. No, it won't. I don't think it'll need a state for now. Unless we have settings and shit. But for now we're gonna import slash so we want to import play screen this is going to be the screen where we have the game and we're going to say if play screen use place get use play screen and as you see it it's just there right but so the the game we're going to think about the layout of the game so this is the display flex is fine. We could do a line item center. It doesn't really matter here. And then justify content center and all that shit. We could do that there. It doesn't really matter. And then as you can see, it's like in the center of the page. It's like, it's cute, right? It's a little cute. The G looks like a Q, but that's okay. <laughs> We're getting, okay, let's actually make it bigger. Let's make it like 100 pixels. Yeah. Okay. So there's a little P tag that's like choose your adventure or make make your dreams reality. A little intense of <laughs> like a slogan. Make your dreams reality. It's like eh. I wanna be these I wanna oh yeah, we gotta make a styles file for play screen. So let's create a play screen .scss and let's add the header to that. So I think this header is only going to be in this in this file. All right. So yeah. Okay. So no. What just happened? Why did Styles play that screen and then H one. I did add this component, right? Hold on a sec. Do I need to like oh that's where I had to like refresh it. That's where okay. So doesn't matter. All right. So we want to have under this, and yeah, we have a shit color background. That's okay. That's everything's okay. All right. So the uh <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Hey, we're we're working out on the color scheme. We're working it out. But yeah, I want to make this a uh, little label here real quick, super quick. 
we're just laying things out. That's why I like React. It makes it very easy for you to get in a little flow where you're just laying shit out. You're just having a good old time. You're having a good old time. I actually want P this P tag to be specific to play screen. So actually, I want to have like play screen. I'm using B E M um, to name my as the naming convention for these class names. So let's say like label or something subtitle. We're gonna have like a class for the actual text that we have on the screen. Um, oh wait. My bad. You just scope it. So the point of SAS is the scope. The main thing that you get with SAS is scoping. So you, you get to write out the scoping of these styles, and it makes it so much easier. And the nesting, I mean. The nesting of these styles, it makes it so much easier to look at to really see and visualize okay so the subtitle is gonna what's it gonna look like it's not gonna be that font family let's get a font family for the general um let's see roboto's I, I like roboto it's actually roboto's pretty good let's actually see let's use roboto for the, for the general text We don't need 300, so let's get this, 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 this. I was, do they have a select all feature? Okay. And then let's link it. Oh, we can, yeah, we can replace um, what we have here. index html yeah we can replace this with this okay now we can use robot yeah, it's just like that okay and we'll default to sense error for whatever reason it didn't load so really for all text and then i'm gonna do this in the app css for everything i am just gonna say well, actually i'm gonna do this in the index css i am just gonna say for all like p tags use use this and all like a tags. I think we really need a tags and all spans. But um, divs. Uh, no, we should never put tags out in divs outside of that. Say in labels. We'll use that for everything for now. That isn't like a header. And then the headers h1, h2, h3, h4. Uh, we'll use uh, right here. We don't have to define that in there anymore. See, this is how you set up your projects. Are AI gonna like have a method? You know what I'm saying? Is your AI gonna actually fucking think of a method the way we're doing right now? I will take your jobs though. No, I'm just kidding. By the way, I am kidding about taking people's jobs. I want to be very clear. I don't desire to take anyone's job with AI. It's just a meme. It's no fear. No fear. I feel like everyone's like gets so, so scared um, about all this shit. Coding is play. Like I'm playing. This is playing right now. You know, I could be playing um, outside, having a good time, and I'm inside coding like a fucking dork. But it's play, okay. Also play outside. Uh, I feel like I have to say that because I realize this is the internet and people are very impressionable. Okay, so let's go to play screen, right? So subtitle. So this is going to be the same color. I want all the color to be this text. So we'll figure out how that's going to be set up. And for the play screen, I want to have all this stuff in a little div up here. That's like, this is going to be the... What is it? I guess it's just like the title area. Hey, it's better than having like stupid, like like naming conventions. It's just like a uh, big header thing. If we're thinking a little bit about it. Okay, and then we're going to have a button here. 
going to be our play button. And everything's named within play screen, which I like. That's what I like. You don't have to like it. Okay. Let's go. So the title area is going to be display flex. Well, this whole thing's going to be display flex. Can be a line item center. We're going to vertically align and we're going to horizontally align. We're going to align it in the box. And this thing is going to have the same thing. This thing is going to have the same thing. Oh, my bad. So this is going to be slightly different because we're going to have flex direction column because we want these to be stacked. The way flex goes is in different directions. Everything flows in flex, but you have to pick the direction that it flows in. It's like, does it flow horizontally? Does it flow? Uh, I said horizontally. <laughs> Does it flow vertically or horizontally? My brain's just not working right now. It's okay. Is it okay? I keep saying that. What am I justifying when I say that? Maybe it isn't okay. Maybe it's not okay. This lineite's messed up. Lineite's, let's just make it a little bit bigger. Like that. just happened oh, i accidentally saved the page itself um what if i do that i'm just sort of wondering if the spacing is because of, it is because of that hmm. okay all right so sorry i'm getting like super ocd so let's go make the font size um Many pixels for this. And then we'll do font style italic. As if someone said it, as if someone said, make your dreams reality. Okay. So let's work on the on the button. So the play button is gonna be like play. Game. Is we need to stack this whole thing. So let's let's design the button. So the button is going to be very simple. We're going to have what I call I call it play screen play button. And the play button is going to be, let's, so when you update the board of a button, you're sort of undoing a lot of the styles, right? First, I'm going to set this to be like the same color as the text for the border. We'll make it a little thick. We'll make it like four pixels and we'll make, give it a border radius of like eight pixels. And then we're going to say, we're going to give it a, some color. And the color is going to be the same as this. And then the background can be transparent. And the padding is going to be 12 pixels by 20 pixels, 15 pixels by 20 pixels. And then the font size is going to be 32 pixels. That's about what I thought, but actually let's make let's give it a um let's make it the same as the header. I'm curious if that'll make this pop. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, you know, not perfect. We'll work on it. But we need to get to oh yeah, then we'll do font weight bold. All right. It's not perfect, but what does I make this border 10? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to do letter spacing here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
So one cool thing you can do with stats is you can say you can use like a hover thing like this, and you could say, well, we want to do cursor pointer. But when when you hover it, we want to say, um, let's first for now we can like make it one of these other colors that we generated, for some that we're just using now for some fucking reason. Maybe this this like ash gray. So it's kind of like a green gray. Where they give that name, ash gray? Is that like an actual name? Why is it ash if it's green? Is that, is that what ash looks like? Did they fucking think about it at all? Everyone out of their minds. Sometimes when people name things like for design, I'm like, are you having a fucking stroke? All right. Oh, ash gray actually looks good. <laughs> this this like color scheme generator is actually not bad. Sometimes people name things, and I'm like, are you just like saying words? Ash gray, like what is that? What does it mean? They're like, just buy it, just eat, just consume. They're like, no one cares. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess. It's like it's a like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay. All right. So we got the play screen. So what we want to do is when this button gets clicked. We want to start the initiate the game, which maybe we we can have initiate pre-game screens. So, hmm. let's do this. Let's have two indexes. One that's like pre-game screens index. Pre game screen index. A little verbose. And let's actually not do this. Let's start this at zero. And then if the pre game index is zero, do this. And then run the play screen if that's the case. And then we're going to create a user creation screen so now we're going to get into the ai piece but in a sec in a sec so this is a create hero screen jsx create hero screen create hero screen now we're this this one's going to be kind of similarly set up where we're going to have like a greater skin then we'll have like a um create button and this is this is gonna and here we're gonna have an h2 that's gonna be like um that's and then the h2 is gonna be like uh create your hero and then we'll have a little subtitle that's like to create your hero, type in prompt describing your hero. And we're going to have a state to generate what the hero looks like. So let's say we have you stay from react const hero image set hero image equals you state and then we'll have const hero name set hero name so we're going to also generate the name too and maybe we like the user can kind of say what they want the name to be right and um, and that's what'll. As far as do we want to AI generate the the name? We want no. We want the person to set the name. The name will be like. We'll have a form here where we say like. We'll, we'll have some states here, so let's say like, what is your hero 
name. And then we'll have like, what does your hero look like? We'll say if there's no hero name, we'll ask them what the hero name is. Or yeah, and I think that makes sense. We're like, what is your hero name? Then class name equals create screen hero hero name. We'll say input type equals text equals hero name. Then on change is going to equal set hero name. Right. We can have a placeholder. It's like the fucking king. I won't say fucking. The king of, of the king. Oh, no. The king of the most or lead mother. Or, 9-11. The motherfucker. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm having too much fun. All right. So, and then we'll say, so once the hero selects their name, we're going to, and there's no hero image, we're going to have an option that's like, Describe what your hero looks like. And then this is, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make a prompt and this is going to be the hero image description state. And it's going to be a hero image description. And then we're going to say value equals this and this. cool a pretty cool guy all right so pretty much when you type this in and you press enter and we'll have a button that's like next next and these and these buttons are just going to be states from this right here screen so we can have like Actually, let's make a global next button. I'm now realizing because we're probably going to want to use next a lot. So let's make the uh, we'll design that in a sec. Of the next button right here. And then we'll go to. Let's see. Why did I censor this? All right, so pretty cool guy. Next button. All right, so now, oh yeah, this is gonna be this is just hero section. Let's just do this section. Now let's uh, design this shit. The creation, the hero creation. So we what we want to do is if one. So we're getting the play screen and then we get the create hero screen from the create hero file. We get the create hero screen, but we need to be, have a way to iterate on, this is important. If you're, if you're into, if you're into, um, 
react and you're trying to learn react is important we're, we're passing the state down we don't actually need to set up a context here it's not really we might have to do it later but i don't want to do that until i have to right so for now i'm just going to set it up so that i have a let's see so that i'm just passing down set states to the component here because in here when this button gets clicked I want to be able to, let's get the prop. When this button gets clicked, I want to be able to go here. Say, set up the index to one. I could say set it to the current one plus one, but I know it'll always be zero. So that's fine. Um, I mean, yeah. If if we ever make this like nods, ah, eh, no, we can we can do that. We can just manually update that. All right. So this create hero state is gonna update. Oh, you know what we do need? So we need to have a title. Oh no, actually we don't need that right now. Okay. A game. Now I have my hero state. Oh, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? All right, so let's let's design this this fucking thing. So let's create a new style for create hero screen or a new SAS file. This and I think we're gonna wind up setting this up so that we don't just have like this create hero screen like this. Let's see. I think eventually we're going to, let's import it. We're going to have like a greater just pre screen, pre game screen states. So let's add that, the SAS file right here. Okay, cool. Let's start designing this page. All right. So this is the, why is this? This doesn't need to exist, I don't think. Yeah, no, it doesn't need to exist. All right. When we go here, we're going to create a global style for this. Not global style, but a wrapper style for this. And we're going to have display flex, flex, direction, column. Cool. And then now things are in the right direction, and we want to get this hero section now put this in a column the reason i use everything flex even though a lot of times we do the same stuff eventually when you want to do something different it's very simple to implement it okay so it's actually for the play the next button i kind of want to copy all this stuff and then i want to use what we have here because i'm pretty sure it's going to be it's going to be pretty similar Oh, is this CSS files? Whatever. Yeah. We want to make it different. We want to make it a little different. Let's make it a little smaller. Be like that. And with yeah. It's, and then maybe the border even smaller. Yeah. Everything scaled down on this one. Little baby button. Okay. So now for the hero section, we have this. We want to sort of be like, what's your hero name? We want this all to be like pretty noticeable. So this H2 that we made with the, what is your hero with the create your hero? Let's actually, and we don't have to actually give that a specific name, but let's go here and let's make, let's say H2 color. We can use the same color. Use this color. And then the font size, it doesn't need to be big. This one might even just be 32. 
a little bigger. Create your hero. <clears throat> and then what's your hero name? Okay. And we can actually give a style for all inputs to be the same here. Hold on. Let's do this. Let's copy this right here. And okay, what's your what is your hero name? Hero's name. And I don't have to do ES, okay? Because we're not talking about many heroes, right? <laughs> All right. The, uh, let's see. Um, interesting. All right. Now let's update this. So all of the buttons or all the text boxes can look the same. I have a vision for the text boxes. Let's make the vision happen. Let's say for all these text boxes, let's do a very similar thing actually as these buttons, but let's modify it a little bit. So I think we can go and do something like this. We want to do outline none. And then we don't need cursor pointer. We don't really need width con fit content. Not really necessary. But we can use one of these colors. Yeah, something like this. Actually, hold on, let me see. That kind of looks okay. Hmm. Let's try one of these colors. And let's say, let's make the border this. See, the color is still going to be this. See, that looks better. I just realized it's not showing the, uh, let's see. If there's no hero name, it's not showing this one. Why is that happening? So I say if hero name, the hero name is actually set for some reason. Oh, whoops. I didn't even set these up right. Okay, let's do E and set hero name E dot target dot value. My bad. Let's set the hero description. Hero image description. Okay. Let's refresh. Play game. Okay. Now it's actually, this is the what's your hero's name. Oh, and then right when it sets it, it does it. My bad. We want to actually make this next thing. We want to have a state that's like, I did that wrong. So we want to have like hero create state when I've set hero create state you state and we'll just uh, we'll, we'll actually do indexes here as well this index is zero Let's show this This next button is going to do the same thing and just set, just pass the index up, pass the index up. And then we're, we're so now we're, we're making very stateful screens. Make it very easy for these states to, or for us to sort of manage the state through indexes. Okay. So, and then when this button, we'll, we'll have to pass down this. Where are we at in the game? So it's a, we're actually going to do this set pregame set 
pregame screen index thing. We're going to actually do the same thing here and pass this into here. And then when this the final next button runs, we're going to have a function that sets this to two. We're just, we're just pushing the index. That's how we're making our game screens go up. And don't worry, I'm going to get to the AI piece in a sec. I just need to set up the basic UI in the beginning. The UI stuff is some people like UI stuff. Some people like AI stuff. I get it. I get it. A little bit for everybody. Okay. Now, let me see how this works. Okay. So this green thing looks a little odd, but I want it to be like, a, maybe the, the blue is a little better. Let me try the blue. I actually really like this color scheme. I swear to God. It's a little dark. Good color though. But this one. The ash gray. That's better. And then this uses this blue. You know what? I'm going to use ash gray. And for this one, I'm going to use this gray. This to the hover state of the play button. For the hover state for all these buttons. I'm gonna use this blue, because I kinda like this blue. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, play button. Okay, enough playing with buttons. Make this margin bottom pixels. Okay, so we add the name. And actually, this I want this to have way bigger size. Like that. Actually, probably even bigger. And then it's like, what's your hero's name? <laughs> and then you're like, so my hero's name is Jared. So I'm going to go next. What does your hero look like? And then this one's actually, I want to make this a text area, I just realized. And this text area obviously is going to have none of a 50 font size. It's kind of absurd. 24. It's already kind of big. But. Okay, so let's change this to text area. Okay. Nice. And then, and then this will have like a width. So this be width like a hundred percent of the box or something. Oh, I just realized. We let's actually give these like real widths. This will be width of like. This will be. Uh, let's actually just give it a height. Height of like 300 pixels. Big. Nice. Nice. So this is what you hear it looks like. So when you say next, we're going to be like generating your hero and then uh what, what you hear it looks like and then we'll, we'll actually we'll, we'll do that all on this screen so actually i'm gonna make this next button hollow for now or not hollow um non-clickable for now so or actually i'll just make it not exist i'll say if there's no hero if there's a hero image show the next button If there's no hero button image, say generate hero. 
It's a little dark, the blue. I kind of like the blue, but blue is too dark. It sucks. I like how I'm just like fully committing to this like random design. Like I have to use these colors that are like subpar. It's like I don't have to use these. It's like why am I like limiting myself? Already, eh, it's a little. We'll use the blue. We'll use the blue. Okay. The generator hero. Nothing happens because now we want to use stable diffusion. So now we're actually going to do AI. <laughs> it was a long-winded way. Not long-winded. That was just a lot of not AI. Okay. So, um. I just need to know the headers. I don't need all this, all this stuff. Let's get, let's copy this curl request and make it a fetch request. So let's make a function called generate hero image. Oh, I just realized there's no back end. The API keys are going to be on the front end. It's okay. I'll deal with that when I when I actually make this like a a thing that's like public. I'll deal with that. <laughs> For now, it's fine. Okay, so the input looks like this. Okay, so this is our input. So this is how you make fetch requests. Fetch, okay, we're making an HTTP request to the RunPod API, which is an API where we have access to things like image generation. And so we're going to make a fetch to this. Is this a post? Okay. It was a method post headers. It's like they want an accept header. It's application JSON. They want an authorization header, which is like this. And they want content type, which is also application JSON content types. What we're pushing, obviously, what we're accepting is um, the other with is application JSON. And then we're gonna put this input stuff in the body. This is the post body that we're sending up, and we have to JSON stringify it for some fucking reason. I don't know why that's a default thing they have. Like, it's like it's like why you know? All right. The width and height is way too big here. We, we want the we don't want the guy to be that big. We want him to be like two hundred width, four hundred height, something like that. Then the prompt is we'll say this now. Image result. And then we also one thing you have to do when you, you we have to parse the JSON out of the result, and then we get the, we'll just say response here. We'll, we'll assume it's just gonna work. I'll log it for now for testing. Okay. The prompt is generate a character, a sprite looking character, an RPG sprite looking character that looks like this and then we'll you do some string formatting and add this to the string oh wait yeah and then this will be we'll add the hero image description that the user did in directly into the prompt that we send up we're doing prompt engineering okay we're doing we're making things dynamic Making things dynamic. It's so weird. I just I just came up on my phone. That's fucking creepy. All right. Let's do it. And we're not seeding anything. Strength. I think with the strength. I think with the guidance scale to be 12. Strength of 8. I forgot what I did where. What is strength again? Do they document? this here
No, we don't do that for now. Let's make the guidance scale 15. So looking character. Full body view, white background. Full body view, white background. Maybe that makes sense. Okay, let's run this generate imi hero image thing. And let's run this when someone does this. And let's say generate hero image, run this function, boom. Everything's broken. Why is everything broken? Unexpected token. Which line did they say? Um, what happened? This looks fine. Oh, well, it looks fine. There's a blatant error. All right, let's refresh. Okay, let's play our game. My hero's name is Jared. Next, what does your hero look like? Um, a hunter. A hunter with a crossbow. Generate our hero. We need to have a loading state, obviously. Do have an error? Oh, we got a... Okay, we got the output. What does it look like? That was quick. Fuck. <laughs> uh... They didn't do it. And that looks terrible. Okay. So what did I do? Is it the guidance scale? So what happens if I do that same prompt with this like API visualizer thing that we have here? Because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I did everything wrong here. Jesus Christ. I was like, that was really quick. Yeah, it turns out they didn't try at all. Okay, so... What's the uh, payload? Generate RPC sprite that looks like this. Let me just copy the value. Okay. I'm going to give it... Maybe we're using the wrong API. Maybe this is not the right API. Because that was fucking absurd. Whatever just happened. Um, you can't update this? Can I... Can I like test it out? My own shit. Oh, right here. Right here. Let's try it out. And maybe I need to like update the these parameters here, you know? Oh, I also made it like a hundred and twenty-eight uh or a thousand and twenty-eight width and height, I just realized. Okay, I think we got a new image here. Let's try this out. Now, on Red Pod, the dude looks epic as fuck. <laughs> Is it because of the guidance scale? Number of images, guidance scale. Yeah, I guess I'll just do seven. That's the only real thing that I changed. How come their thing, like, it was like, it was like epic. And by the way, now that we know that we can get the images, I'm going to implement it and show the image. So it looks like it comes from out.output.image URL. So I can say response.output. I just opened up Chrome for no reason. So .image URL. 
set hero image. And I want to say in this screen, I want to say if hero image, just show the fucking image. Not complicated. Just realize that we, we got to simplify. I'm like being too, too anal about a lot of this stuff. So let's run it again. Hero image. Does it show? It does show, and that looks terrible. Also, why is it? I'm going to make this way smaller. Um. Okay, so, and then margin. Actually, just scale it down. Yeah. So what's going on? So apparently, when I use the API here, it's like shit. When I use their amazing, beautiful API, it's right here. Like this API is way better. Like, what's happening? What's that's so weird because it's like, what's different about this one? It was like amazing. Oh, this one has a seed. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't. Okay. Is it because of the height and width? It can't be. I mean, it's not even like doing it. Let's just add more denoising steps. Let's do that. Is there anything I'm doing wrong here? No. I can't. Let's do 100 denoise. Or... Yeah, yeah. And 100 denoising steps. Let's refresh. Let's refresh to test. Refresh to test. All right. Play game. Here's name. With the crossbow. Generate it. We need a loading state. taking a bit it didn't what the, uh, I don't understand maybe we'll keep this at 25 and make this 100 uh, maybe it's because of the height and width so maybe we'll just do 1024 for both because it's not the prompt we know the prompt's good like, look at this. This is, like, epic. I don't know why there's, like, a sword right there, but, like, the dude looks, he looks epic. He looks like Assassin's Creed. Okay, so let's play a game. Let's generate the hero. I'm going to have a regenerate button. I don't want to keep refreshing the page. Let's actually do that. If there's a hero image, have a regenerate hero. It's literally just going to do the same thing. Oh. Fuck. It like did it. So it was the height and oh, it was the height and width was messed up. So let me look at so stable diffusion, um, XL height and width. I see what's going on. So it actually does it. It's because I set up the wrong height and width. I thought it could just do whatever height and width. It's recommended to use. 
Interesting. So they want you to do like 1024 by 1024. Does these like, is that because it's XL? Is that what that means? <laughs> so how does this one work? <laughs> Interesting. These are all just squares. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. We'll just scale it down. Everything will just be a fucking square. That's okay. So sarcastic when I say that. Uh, and then this will be 300 by 300. Yeah, I just use the image as a style. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to fucking do about it? I thought nothing you can do about me using bad conventions nothing you can do about it okay. so nice oh yeah why well, I gotta make sure it's not like bleeding across the page I don't know why he has like all this random shit on the side here. It's not really a big deal, but that looks cool. It's like a, he doesn't have a crossbow, so they kind of just fucked that up. Um, let's make this a little smaller. Okay, so let's regenerate the hero. Oh shit, there's nothing in the, there's nothing in this thing right here. Is he gonna do it? Yeah, it's just like a generic looking hero. All right, let's do like a magician with a long bow who looks like a tech bro. Because that's our hero. Our, our story, we're gonna use a story. It's about a tech bro who is lost in the dungeon. That's our scenario. <laughs> Let's see. Does he look like a tech bro? Let me scale that image up. Let me scale this image up a little bit. Yeah, he looks like it. he has a longbow. He has another thing in his hand. And he does look like a tech bro. Like it's pretty accurate. It's pretty cool. All right, so so we're we're generating characters. Very cool. Very cute. Um, because the um, I want to make it actually expand. I'm not gonna do this whole. I want to make the page the the screen expand. I don't know why I like limited the page to be um. This we'll just do min. We'll just do that. I don't want to, yeah. It's padding at the bottom. No, wait, that didn't do anything. Oh. Nice. Okay, we're generating characters. So, we're generating here. Oh, yeah, we need a loading state. I'm going to do that now because we really need a loading state. I go to loading.io for my loading states. Hey, J hey, Jared. It's been a while you've streamed. Hey, what's up, uh, Sarab? Yeah, I needed like a week to to get back into... I needed to get ideas and I needed to get some inspiration for a week. So now I'll be streaming more because uh, I now I'm back in the flow. Like I needed to... Like I feel like the way I work is all like... I'll think of, I need to like have some deep work where I think about what's the next shit we got to do. And now I know. So we're going to be, we're going to be building a lot of shit. Okay. So what's like an RPG looking thing here? I can just use this like this again. I use this on another stream, but that's not the vibe. The vibe is more um, this. No, I'm just using all the. Oh, I gotta use the free tier shit. This looks like some like Illuminati shit. This one. Let's 
see. Just use the gears. We don't have to get fucking. No, no, we'll, we'll use Pac-Man. I think it's pretty obvious we should use this. And we'll use our. <laughs> we'll use our fucking thing here. I love this color scheme. It's so average. That's what I love about it. I just love how average it is. So, and then he'll be eating these little green fucking things. Everything's the color scheme. The color, the color scheme is how everything works here. Okay. Then he's eating the green things. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's download this SVG. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do an animated SVG. I have to fucking log in. Let's see. But yeah, yeah, I'm streaming. I'm streaming. I'm never going to not be streaming. I need to take some time, get some contract work in. Now I'm ready to go. Ready to go. All right. Now I got, I got a list of like the next few things I'm going to stream, at least like for the week um okay so did that download i feel like that didn't download let's do date added oh yeah it didn't download oh oh i didn't um here we download it Free download, yes. And then download, yes. Just fucking let me down. Let's call this a bean eater. It's Pac Man. Maybe it's sued for this. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> Sue me. What are you going to take? My pride. <laughs> Where did I save it? Oh, it's right there. I'm just being dramatic, emotional, like a child. All right, so let's let's go into. Um, I call this anything RPG. Anything RPG. And then let's go into the public folder and let's paste this item in here. And I think we can import images pretty easily here. Okay, so let's actually make a component for loading. Let's not be, let's not be kids. Let's actually structure everything well. This is our loading. Our JSX. Loading export default. I just want to get to the game shit. Like I'm being straight up. I just don't fucking. Oh, you know what? I want to have it in line here. So you know what? I'm actually gonna add it to the file itself. Oh, I like how this is a small um SVG. Very nice. Sometimes they make these SVGs like super big. Let's convert it to React. Uh, we don't need to style anything. Or style tag. Style. We don't need anything style. Um, what am I saying? Um, we don't need a style attribute. I don't know why it was so hard for me to get out. Uh, okay, so this isn't, I need to add the closing tag. Coding is perfection. Perfect and it never breaks. If you're coding, if your code breaks, you're a fucking idiot. 
That's what they don't tell you in coding boot camp. Or you're in your, your coding college or whatever, like whatever you do. They don't tell you that. You know, the reality is if your code ever breaks, it's because you're fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously, about that. But yeah, if your code ever breaks, it's because you're dumb. That's like the first, uh, they're like, and then like someone gets a, and everyone just, their code breaks and they're just like, don't, don't tell me. Are you serious about that? Do this in reverse. Okay, so let's, we have a loading state. Let's do it. Let's let's test the loading state out. We can use this wherever we want in our in our in our video game. Okay, so this is Jared. And pretty cool guy. A hunter with a crossbow. Right here. Nice. We got the fucking loading thing. See, it's in our color scheme. I don't want him so into the color scheme. It's so average. Nice. So we can regenerate this hero. Because he doesn't have a crossbow. So I'm just going to regenerate him. We can, uh, in the regenerate at the top, we can set hero image. Okay. So the. There's like as there's like a, a blender editing thing right there. It's not perfect. Oh, I said cross box. My bad. Regenerate him. My bad. My bad. That's on me. That's on me. But yeah, I'm gonna go back to regular streaming. I need a little I needed to like I needed to to find the way again. I needed to go. I needed to search because i feel like i have time like there's always like a week where i need to just like study research read history all right he has a crossbow thing okay nice so that's so we get the hero image we have the name with the hero boom we can get to the next step so the next step is generating the world yeah and then when we generate the world, it's going to, like, give us a background image. And that's going to look fucking awesome. Oh. How are we going to do with all this white text? We'll figure it out. Well, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I, I, there's, a, there's neat tricks to make foreground text when you have background text. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. It's a lot of F words in this one. This is not for kids. Okay. Let's realize we want to put this button in here. Okay. Lots of state management. Okay. Let's create a new component called um this is the create world screen so now we can do this a little faster because i already kind of figured out the logic for it we're gonna have a generate world image we're gonna have a world image we're gonna say set world image um we're gonna have our world image description we don't need the name. We don't need multiple states here. So we don't need any of that. But we do want the loading state. We're going to have a world image screen file. Which, um, you know what? We don't even want a, a different file here. We want to use the same stuff as the create hero screen. Uh, and then let me update that in a sec. But the way this is going to work is we're going to say create describe the world what is the world 
the game world. And then we don't need this. We don't need any indexes and anything in this one. You know, things become faster. Like you do the hard work in the beginning, so things become faster later on. You set up the groundwork. See what I'm saying? Okay, so example, a post-apocalyptic, I spell that word? I'm a little, you know, the ism. Apocalyptic. Here, I'm, I'm not all there. It's apocalyptic. Post-apocalyptic. World cyberpunk world, lots of dog puppies, very hardcore. That's just the, the example. Okay, so we're not gonna have an so we're gonna have instead of the hero image, we say world image. So we're gonna say let's do that. Loading states can be the same thing. We're gonna have world image, world image, world image. We're gonna have generate world image, regenerate world, generate world. We're gonna pass this index to three. Anything else? No. It's the same setup. And then obviously we want a different create world screen. Export that. Beautiful. Set world image description. Okay, so let's change that. And we'll say set world image description. Beautiful. And then we'll instead of saying describe what your hero looks like, we'll say describe the game world. We see what world will your adventure take place in. And then we implement it after we build it. Here we say, if it's game screen two, we import the create world screen. And then we do that. And we do that. And then we don't have to move over the styles. It's, that's actually fine. All right, let's go next. Cool. Describe the game world. And I'll actually say a post apocalypse. Apocalypse. Hey. Post apocalyptic cyberpunk world where the cars are puppies. See, I think it's going to freak out. If I do that, I think it's going to fucking freak out. <laughs> if the, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to fucking freak out if I do that, obviously. It's okay. That's okay. Okay, so the um, nice. All right, so let's generate the world, and instead of this, we're gonna say the world description, and we're actually gonna say set world image to null. World image. Let's say set. Okay, generate a background for a world, an atmospheric background image for a world. For a setting make it highly detailed setting looks like this for a it's just for a world, okay. The world looks like this. 
Because I'm all about atmospheric. I'm all about atmosphere. Okay, let's let's generate the world. Let's see. I actually don't know if this one's gonna like be as good as the other one. No idea. No idea. That's actually kind of cool. The dog isn't a puppy, but it is like post-apocalyptic. The car is not a puppy. I just want to be very clear. The car, there's a puppy next to the car. But also, that's kind of confusing. So, we'll, we'll give them that. Oh, guidance scale. Let's make the guidance scale 15 this time. Let's, let's make some puppies, please. Puppy cars. It's kind of fucked up having like a car as a puppy. Hmm. It's not oh they just like copy and pasted little puppies there they did not make it better are there any okay okay cars that look like puppies let's do that I feel like the guidance scale isn't like like i feel like it's a little high i don't think that made that any better okay i didn't save it when i updated that Mm -hmm. I'm watching the time. I want to get to the okay. It's at least on the on the you know. It's at least on the car. That's fine. <laughs> um by the way, when they're generating the world, they are we are just showing them that the image is updating, but more is happening. Okay. Also, we're not gonna sh put the image right here. When they generate the world image, it's actually not going to set. We don't need a state for the world. Well, no, we we do kind of need a state. But we're going to actually have the world image up here. Actually, we're going to have everything global, I'm realizing. We don't want that right there. We just want to say set world image to be that. And then we're just going to want to. And then next... Um, we could say regenerate world. We can still do that, but we're going to set it global. And then we'll, in here, we'll have a state that's like world image. And we need hero image and hero name here. Too. World image. Ask set to here. But we want to do these two things as global states as well. So we're going to have both these things. Do I want a context? I feel like eventually I am, but we're, we're hacking today. We're hacking. I don't want to make this one too long, too. Okay, so let's do hero name, set hero name, hero name, set hero name, and that's, and then we'll say set hero name, it's crazy long, it needs to be broken down. All right, I mean, it should still work, but we're gonna do that, and we're gonna do that. And, okay, so now let's set up what the world background screen is gonna look like. And it's gonna look a little weird at first, but I think it'll be, I think it'll be okay. I think everyone will live. So I wanna have the style it's actually add a no we have to do it in line we'll say if hero image so we're going to say background url 
URL to use the, the hero image. The div, yeah. And we'll say background. And I think it's fine to do this. Um, so repeat, I think it's fine to do this for everything. So we don't really need to make this stateful. I mean, we have to make this part stateful. We'll say none, is that fine? Or I can say unset, maybe. Okay, and then we'll have this cover it, but we actually don't want it to cover it. What just happened? Expected a comma. Right. Everything just broke. Reference error here name is not defined. And add it up here. Set it here name. Zero image. Zero image. Oh, where's the hero image? Our, oh, I removed, I put this in the wrong thing. I was like, why isn't it auto-complete? Uh, okay. That was an impressive sound. There it. Hunter with the bow. Let's generate the hunter with the bow. How far are we in here? The I'm I'm trying to always keep it a little under control. If you catch my drift. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. All right. Two hours. Hunter with the bow. Okay, let's go next. Everything broke because we're, I said word image. World image. Oh, actually, we have to pass the world image in here. My bad. So let's go. Game. Let's set world image. I want to at least finish a pretty basic game loop and I'm not stopping until then so maybe it'll be a little longer I want to do the fucking game loop I don't give a fuck you say hunter that looks like a cowboy with a with a huge Hat, a fucking hat. Do they, do they care if you say it? curse word there? A lot of F words here. Maybe I should I should chill with that, you know. Just kidding. Don't care. All right. Let's go. So we have the, the pack round going. We're loading. See, it is a huge hat. They gave him a huge hat. Wow, that's awesome. He he does he is a hunter, it looks like look at him. He's like he's all small too. They made him small and gave him a big hat. That's AI is funny. Okay, let's go next. Okay, describe the game world. Post apocalyptic world with ton of weird looking. No, that's with a ton of puppies just everywhere. I had to say, I want to say just everywhere, so it kind of gets the, the way I feel about it. Oh, um, let's see if it actually covers the whole background. If it, like, fucks off or anything. Let's see. 
I like how it didn't actually break anything, though, when I added those background styles. So we're getting the game world. Nothing happened. Awesome. So this image thing isn't working. Because I said hero image. Um, this isn't working. Hold on a sec. Background re background URL. That's this is how you do it, right? Style. No, it didn't set it. Background URL. Okay. I'm gonna just do background. Nice, it did it. It did it didn't the background repeat didn't work. Okay, I don't know what. Why didn't it do the background repeat? Is that... Oh, background URL isn't a thing. Right. Now it's not doing anything. Now they do background image. What is that? Okay. So what's going on? Why why isn't the repeat thing work? I don't need to put the repeat thing in there though. I just realized we can just do that. If this is just gonna break it, then we'll just do all the other styles in here. Repeat. Nice. And obviously we want to center it. Background position center. Oh my God. <laughs> That's insane how many puppies they put there. I like how the puppies are like all kind of have their own thing going. That's so many fucking puppies. <laughs> all right. It's nice. Very cool. So here's how we're going to do the background. So we're going to keep this as the background. But we're gonna do something. Give me, give me a sec. Give me a sec. We're gonna make everything in the game these ones. We're gonna make all this stuff. Put this in a container. Game play wrapper. Our game's fun. Then we do adding pixels or some shit. Then we're going to say, um, okay, and then we're going to do the border radius of, I do ASMR. Okay, so let's, do, let's make this background color like an RGB. But we're going to make an RGBA because we want to make it so the user can see the background. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's exactly what I was thinking. Nice. I'll we'll make it a little, uh, a little at the other direction. A little less. Make it like eight. Describe the game world. It's actually kind of cool. <laughs> All right, let's actually regenerate the world and let's make a new description. Let's say like a post-apocalyptic world, cyberpunk world 
where there's a lot of people eating people with with jorts jean shorts in fact too many too many people enjoy in jorts generate the world see how it like it's changing it changes the i mean the world we're keeping the world because we're going to use this the world description because we're going to oh, i have to make it global we have to use the world description state to to like generate our scenarios in our loop which we'll do in a sec oh wait we needed the screen for generating the scenario that's fine we'll do that real quick did it get the jorts i didn't i don't see jorts i don't see jorts i didn't think i was gonna say that let's do background size contain let's see those jorts no no jorts Maybe this is just what society looks like when more people wear jorts. Maybe that's what the AI is. There is like, yeah. There is like, we know. Your society's fallen. All right. So when we go next, boom, this, we don't have anything there because we need to create it. So we need to have a scenario screen. I, I promise you, I'm going to get into the game loop. We'll have a scenario. Create scenario screen. And then in the create scenario screen, we're going to just copy all this shit. We're going to say create scenario screen. And we're going to have scenario. This is going to be super simple. So we're going to have this. It's just going to be like you say this, you just describe the scenario. There's no loading, there's no function, no generation. We say, what is the game scenario? And we'll say, briefly describe what type of game this is or what what is happening in the adventure or what this adventure is about this adventure briefly okay and then here we'll just have a next button once they just type anything in here or and then we're going to say set this to scenario and set scenario. The example is going to be I like to use examples in the placeholder. I make things dumb simple, stupid, dumb simple. Okay. So this is going to be a aim, a dungeon crawling game. Where you have to save, find, and save the princess. Okay, so it's going to break a little because we need to import this. This is going to be the create scenario screen. And then in the create scenario screen, let's say, Pre game screen index equals three. And then we're going to say, this is the last one. So we're actually not even going to, we're just going to, we're going to say game, game loop. We're going to have like a run game loop run game loop it's going to be false and it's going to be true once we set the game loop here 
And then and the first thing, so let's let's uh, this is the fun part for me. Okay. It's the fun part for me. All right, let's go. Set, let's run the game. So we're actually not gonna pass. We're gonna pass our run game loop here. I said lop. Okay. I don't think I'm okay. All right. So let's set the scenario. Let's set the scenario. The default will pass scenario to this and set scenario. And then, because we like order, we make order out of chaos. That's what we do here. So we're setting the scenario, and then the next is not going to do this. It's going to be set run game loop. It's going to set it to true. Now we're going to start the game loop. So a couple things with the game loop. So we'll actually have a component that just does it. So I have a component that's like game loop. And because, well, we can do it in here. I just feel like it's going to get a little intense. And we'll do it in the gameplay wrapper. We'll say if game loop. And also we can just say if no game loop for all this. Just in case, because I just don't want any anything interacting. I don't think it's ever going to be the case. And for me, the last one. But okay, if run game loop, we're going to say if run game loop, run game loop. We'll import that. In game loop definitely needs its own styles. Definitely needs to see how, how big the fucking code base is getting. This is all, all this stuff. This is how things work. After you, you just keep going, things just start to escalate. Okay. Just. And then eventually, and you know how all the components work. It's like when you're when you're coding, you have to keep the state in your head of what's happening as you're going and then eventually you get to a point where you're adding features and it feels good you're in a flow state why i'm fucking whispering it's super weird okay so the game loop needs to work i need to think this through but the game loop's going to work in a way where first oh, i already did think this through hold on i need to copy this this right here okay so we get we have to get the story event so the way the game loop is going to work is we're going to have an iterator so let's import this is we're doing react game loop stuff here is that cool we're going to say use state from react we're going to say <clears throat> whenever we get a, what's it called? Um, whenever we get a anything, we're gonna change the game loop and we're gonna change this iterator, this index. So this is the loop index. Loop state index. Game state index, I think. Ah, loop state, I think is more clear. And we'll set it right here and it'll start at zero. We're going to say if zero, then run. Well, we're going to have to run a process to essentially. Oh, yeah, we need to use effects now. We need loading 100%. We need loading. We're gonna have a use effect that's like whenever the state, and we're gonna be watching the states. We're gonna say we don't need switch statements because I hate them. 
because in every language they make the switch statements have like crazy different um i don't care so much about this but they have the switch statements have like different syntax in every language and i get it maybe i misunderstand some or maybe it's not needed in the application realm and that's why no one uses it anymore okay so let's so the way it's going to work is we're going to say okay if it's the first index we're going to sh set loading to true and then we're going to get the story event so i'm going to have a function to get the story event i want to keep all this logic in here so i'm actually going to create a file and create a lib folder And in the lib folder, this might be a four hour one. I want to do three hours, but it might be four. And then we're going to have our game event. A game. Just, just do like, just do utils. Oh, how generic do I want this to be? Let's just do like story events. Yes. I don't know what I'm putting in here other than the just story event. But let's say get story story event. And this is gonna be this is gonna have like one of these requests from our run run pod. We're gonna export get story event. We'll do that, use this in a sec. For now, let's go in the game loop. Let's import uh get story event from lib slash story events. And then get story event is gonna work in a way where we run the get story event and then once we get the event so like let's go back to the notes so i get the story event and then i get these event types and i need to have logic to initiate event type so after we get the event so this we'll get like the event detail or the event um description right here and we'll like show the user this description and then after we get the the description we're gonna say we're gonna show it so we'll say story event description set story event And then we'll set the story event description here and actually before we can show it but we want to get the, the loot items and i actually don't want to stop the loading screen until the loot we get the loot items we want to do the processing where so i want to have every story event we want to dynamically say is this a fight um We want to have a like something to say, are we getting a general story event, a loot story event, or a companion story event? So you know what? Let's do this. I got to think it through for each of them. Okay, first things first, we have to roll the dice. So we have to say... get random event type event type if event type we'll write that function in a sec is loot do this event type is as if event type is companion this else if event type is a fight do that if it is general just do with something and then we're gonna we're gonna pass the event type to the story event and um let me think 
We want to do this first. And if it's loot, so what do we want to do if it's loot? We want to get the the loot item name and the image. And we'll figure out how to do that. We can parse the loot item name from the event description, I think. Um, and we'll have another prompt to do that, actually. So we, I think I actually want two Llama 2 prompts to do this. So, so there's going to be two... Llama two. So this is going to be like one llama two prompt. One, I don't have to say llama two. One prompt, two prompts, two prompt, four prompt, five prompt, six prompt. And then we're going to have a companion prompt. And this is going to be um, same thing. We have to get the companion name and their image. Get the companion. We're going to like have a place where we show all the companions and we show all the loot items. And it's going to be two prompts. The, the, the fight is going to be another loop. It's going to initiate another loop. So we're going to set fight loop state and initiate. We'll, we'll figure out how to do, deal with that. Uh, and then general is, is actually just going to be nothing. So actually don't need to check for this okay. and then we're gonna like yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense and then we're gonna at the end of this we're gonna set loading the false and just show everything that happened and um so then for the fight we'll like initiate the fight and shit okay cool let's do it so first things first let's get this a, a random event type let's make a function in this little lib story events thing that's going to be like get event random event type and we'll say it's like five percent likely it's a um it's a loot five percent likely it's a companion oh 20 percent bite so we're at 30 percent so 70% general. And then the way we'll, um, I mean, we could just, the way the way I'll do this, I'll just do math.random. It's a random number from zero to one, multiply it with, well, we can just say, well, we can multiply, we don't have to, but um, I'm gonna just multiply just to make it clean. But we can say um, this is our randnum. We'll say if randnum is less than five. Hey, see what I'm doing? Return loot. I'll say if randnum less than 10. Companion. Like, in the interview, you're like, how would I fucking do that? How would I make it random for different things? Nah, this is like too simple to be a. And then it's like, this is how you do it. You just set little gates. That's the easiest way I do it when I have to do stuff like this. 20, so it would be 30. Turn. Because in that bracket, it's just 20% likely, technically. Okay. Oh, no one fucking cares. <laughs> and we're not really checking for general, but it's fine. Okay. And we'll like mess around this we're testing. We're all just like, when I want to test something, I'll just, I'll just do that or something. Actually, this is like testing. We'll just have a testing thing. So we'll say, we're just, we're just testing, just return loop. Right. And then we'll just change that whenever we want to test for things. Right. So let's get the random event thing and add this to the game loop. Just did. So get the event type. And then cool. Description. All right, let's let's make a story event. Let's go to run pod. Let's get let's do fun run pod stuff, right? Man, I wish they had Mistral. I like Mistral. I like 
There's just something about it. All right. So imagine if I said it like that. I was like, man, okay. I sounded like the Joker. And like no one said anything because they felt too awkward. You're like, yeah, yeah, I like Jared streams and all, but like, what the fuck? <laughs> like he's like, he literally is like fucking creepy as shit, right? And then and then people think you're bad. They're like, hey man, you can't say that. Hey man, Jared actually like. And then you're like, dude, he's like fucking cre and then and then people shame you. They're like, he literally sounds like the Joker. People are like, hey man, you don't understand. He had a tough life, okay? And then I, I claim victim status for sounding like the Joker. I'm like, hey man. I'm like, because I sound like the Joker, I need reparations <laughs> just kidding am i i don't know i sometimes forget obviously i'm just kidding nothing's a big deal until it is until everyone's a victim want to be a victim want to be a victim let's make this uh, i think 2048 i say that i was like so confused when i said that Frequency penalty is way too big. Temperature, way too small. Let's make it 75. Okay, who is the president of the United States? It's a funny question. Um, because it's like, I don't think Valentin knows that. They don't know like current day shit. Hey, have you, hey man, have you taken a look at, at Langsmith yet? Is that just like another uh, another one? What, is that like Langchain? What's Langsmith like? They did say yo, Joe Biden. Nice. Uh, okay, cool. So tell me, tell me about Langsmith. What's Langsmith like? All right. So we're going to make a promise. This is our story event. This is like whenever you're playing one of these choose your adventure games. It's like, boom, this is the the story event or whatever. Like This is like every time you iterate, it makes this event or it goes to, to this event or tells you what happened, right? So I got to figure out how to fucking make a prop that's like that. Uh, let's do story event. Okay. So the story event prompt. Oh, yeah, we have to pass in a few things. We have to pass in the hero description, the world description. I think that's it. And the scenario. Let's see. Hey, hey, what's up, Bobby Nav? Streaming today. I'm making, I'm making 12 year old Jared very happy. I used to love these fucking like choose your adventure games. And now we can just use AI to do it. Isn't that interesting? All right. So the story of that. So, so actually, so let's, let's set the prompt up like that. I just realized, is it already instruction? Yeah. This is the instruction. Okay. So, hmm, interesting. How did I do it for script monkey? People like like script, script monkey. People fucking use that. <laughs> I was like, dude, I made this in. I don't even know. Maybe it might have been a while that I made it in. I don't actually remember how long that stream was. Let's see. Oh, this is it. This is what they look like. I think. Oh, but I pass up an instruction prompt. Okay, I do pass up an instruction prompt. Okay. Um. That's fine. The. Uh, is it was I doing this wrong? Well, it works, so who cares, right? If things work, you don't have to fix anything, right? That's life. If it works, don't fix it. If it's broke, don't fix it. Or did I, did I get that wrong? I'm kidding. Um, okay, so 
have to structure it like this. Let's see. Say, write me a role playing. How do I like how to do this? Let's see. This is like, this is the event. Like when you're playing your role playing game, this is like the moment where it's like, this is what's happening in the scene. Oh, I just realized I have to have uh, the previous action just in case. But we'll, we can have a different prompt for that. This is like the intro prompt where we're just saying, like, this is the first thing that's happening. I just realized this is, yeah, this needs to be like, totally different this is only once this is the intro so there's no previous action is the and then else use a story prompt you have to say where you are okay you are a role you are a narrator yeah for a role-playing game i will give you the character the, the character the world and the scenario and you have to generate a an introduction to this role playing game to the user you must you must follow you must follow the instructions below are you going to watch it work by the end of the stream so I uh, maybe oh yeah so far I do have I have like the the set oh well this is broken but I have the setup of the game right now uh, because I have the scenario thing I have a decent I have like uh, the first part done I want to get enough done that I have a game loop that I'm proud of and then I want to I have another stream where I like make it good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to put that in there. Let's refresh. Oh, and I did this. This is an error too. Event description. Oh wait, isn't it? Oh my bad. My bad. Async function on loop. Once I get the game loop, yeah, camera. So that's so that wasn't it. Because I should do ASMR in these. Let's see. Fucking creepy. Great world screen is not defined. Where? Why am I defining it somewhere? Let me see. Where am I defining? Oh, my bad. My bad. Oh, this thing. I need to get rid of that. But yeah, this is. Uh... <laughs> Let's. Let me see the game. I think it's. Where is it? Where is it? But yeah, I'm gonna get some shit working. Don't don't you? The uh, yeah, I like you know me, Abinav. I like it when things work. Um, why is this a uh, rapper showing all the time? Oh, because right, 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 right. right. 
going to say if this is greater than zero. So it's like anything RPG, make your dreams come reality. Play the game. Create your hero. His name is Jared. What does your hero look like? He's a a, a wizard with a, an afro who carries a crossbow. Let's generate this. Like that loading? Like that loading? Okay. Yo, he has an afro. That's fucking cool. He's got... That's a weird crossbow. I don't like that crossbow. But anyway, you get the point. So it's like I generate the hero. And then we're going to get the game world. And so he's going to be in a, a, a city that cyberpunk city with... A ton of puppies running around. Alright. And this is going to set the atmosphere. So I wanted this to be like, I want to have it, because I like the idea that you're playing like a choose your adventure game and you have as you're playing, you have the atmosphere of the game just in the background. You see yeah, that dude, that actually looks good. I don't know if you can fucking see that. There's like a ton of puppies. I should make this. Um, that's so funny. That actually, <laughs> that's a lot. All right, and then it goes next. Oh, this part. I need to fix a scenario. But then you you describe the scenario, and then oh, loading's on the fine because I didn't add loading in here. But you get the point. And then and then after that, we start the game. And that's what I'm doing here. So I got to create the loading state for the for loading. There doesn't actually need to be a loading button. The game, Jared. Uh, oh, guy. Oh, am I going to have to do this every time? Hold on a second. I got to make it so I can just test this without, without having to like run through this whole process every time. A lot of testing is just making sure you don't do the same shit over and over again. Also, I'm going to make it easier to see the background. Let's go into the... Um... <laughs> yeah, this one. Let's make this like... Nine? No, no, no seven. Okay. okay, let's go next. I like that. A cyberpunk world with a ton of puppies running around. Like hilarious. I didn't know that was actually gonna like look like that. That was like intense. That was like a lot of puppies. I did say a ton, so that might be a ton of puppies. No, that wouldn't be a ton. <laughs> it's like a cyberpunk world with all these little puppies around. I'm a simple guy. All right, so let's go next. Okay, what's the game scenario? There's no next button. Oh, right, because you have to type it in first. So you just describe the adventure. So I'll say like a hero who has to save the princess. And I want to make this AI generated, but all right, let's go next. And then we start the game loop. Um, but we didn't, we're, we're, we're still riding the game loop right now. Okay, let's run the loop. Um, oh, I, is it that did set set run game loop is not a function? Are we gonna watch? Um, yeah, but uh, so let's let's fix that. Why is set game loop not a function? So I'm not passing it to it. I think that's why. Server. Why is it not a function? It is a function.
All right, cool. I did it. All right. So now should be running this llama two thing. Okay. Yeah. Let me think. Yeah, 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 that's good. All right. So the way this works is we get the, the event type, we get the event story event, and then we get the event type in here. But the, oh yeah, we gotta pass the hero description and all that shit. I'll do that in a sec. And um then this runs. All right, so you're a narrator for a role-playing game. You must follow the instructions below. And the instructions below are... Hmm. You must... Let's see. What are the instructions? First, I say I'm going to give you this. You have to... So, like, write a description that describes the setting the user player is in first welcome the player using the hero's name and describe they are write a descri write a descript write a description that describes write describe in detail I do want it to be detailed. describe the setting the player is in and what their objective is. Briefly, to briefly explain where they are and let's see, use, what's the best way? I think that's kind of. I actually just want to see what it'll do then. Here is the hero's description. Hero description. And then I put in the hero's description right here. And then I say, here is the world description. World description. Then I do the world description. A description of the hero. Here is a description of the world. That's more like it. And it says, oh, yeah. Use the scenario to write when writing your introduction, your game introduction. The given utilize the given scenario when writing your game introduction. Here is a description of the scenario. Scenario description. It's, it's not. It's kind of weird, but scenario. I'm actually, gonna add it in quotes just to make it even clearer. Do not reply with anything other than the introduction, introduction to the hero. 
the game introduction to the player. Now I actually have to pass these values into it, which I'm not doing. So let's go. So the game loop, we actually have to pass in the hero world. Um, we do need to pass in the world image and the hero image too. Maybe we need a context, but it's fine. I think we'll manage. I need to pass all this stuff into here. Go into the game. Go into the game. Remember, that was so funny on Kingdom Hearts, where it would be like that one part where you have to fight in the uh, Olympic Olympia or whatever. You'd be like, "We gotta go to the game." I remember always making jokes about that. It was so fucking ridiculous. Okay, world description, hero description. I gotta pass the descriptions up here, which I forgot to do. Hero description, world description. I did do the for the scenario. Okay, let's get the hero image description, whatever. And um, let's make these props. <laughs> Make these props. I emphasize that so much. And then the, for the world description, let's make this a prop. Okay. The thing about speed coding is that it's terrible. Okay, so. <laughs> thing about it is that it's really bad and you shouldn't do it okay so here the <laughs> just kidding obviously you should always do everything i do it's the point of the streams no not at all uh all right so your description we have to pass this to the hero one hero screen And then we pass these, and we can just name it that right here. And then we'll do the world. So now, so we're describing the world we're in. We're describing the hero we're in. We're just having a great time. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> We're doing, we're listening, guys. We're just having a great time. This is, if anyone says that, run. They're, they're, they're get, trying to get you into a little scheme. Nah, that's not what good guys say. Hey, guys, we're going to, we're all get, we're all going to have a great time. Get the fuck away from me. All right. Syntax error is in this file on line 24. Why is it? Oh, whoops. Let's say, let's say this is the story event result. And then this is await.json response. How far are we? But I want to really go too, too long here. It's about at three. Okay. I don't want to fucking go too crazy here. So I do want it to like be doing the game loop. Go the response. So, you know, people want some. Some people can't 
fucking follow thing for long. I get it. No, I get it. It's, it's a lot. Um, I think we're good. Right, we're not doing previous action yet. We'll do that in a sec. I think we're good. Just realize this is going to take longer. It's fine. I think we're going to have to do the, the async action. We'll see. All right, so let's go to the story event. Let's actually log the event description. Oh, wait, I'm not returning anything. What's the error? I don't think there's any error. Okay. Oh, no, there is an error, obviously. So what's, what's the error? 24. I thought I fixed it. I know it's not async, so there's that. Broken error. I, I don't know what's going on. Let's refresh. Oh, it's fine. Okay. All right. Love the color scheme. Hunter looking guy. I just realized, yeah, I gotta make it so I don't have to wait every time I. Oh, well, I shouldn't have to refresh every time, though. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, next. Next. Post apocalyptic cyborg world with a lot of puppies. Yeah. Post apocalyptic world. Yes. Get the game. I want to at least, before I stop, I want to at least get, because I, I do want to make this a part one. Because I want to, I want to, same with the, the front end developer one and this one are, by the way, after this, I'm going to do a front end developer video where I show, whoa. Uh, it's very intense. I'm going to do that next. So, dungeon crawler. I think we're i think it's loading but um i want to do part ones and shit i don't want to just i don't i don't have to stream long the whole time why is he doing two requests i think it's probably fine let's see let's see okay nice nice so cool this is the okay this is the scenario that it generated for the user greetings brave adventure welcome to the mystical realm of avaria where magic and night reign supreme you're you're a hero's name fuck <laughs> a skilled warrior who um uh a skilled warrior with a thirst for adventure and a heart full of courage. Your journey begins in the bustling city of Widowdale. This doesn't f fucking have anything to do with, uh, this is just, this is like, just, this is nothing to do with maybe my, um, <laughs> this is just a random, uh, let's see. Let's see if this one's better. They sound like it's like brave adventure. It's not mystical. Instead of post-apocalyptic world, maybe my um, there's a chance that my thing fucked up. Like there's a chance that my payload is messed up. So this prompt. Let's copy that. Yeah. I mean, it sounds kind of nice, though. I do like it. If it was about what I said, it sounds nice. Oh, because all the descriptions are undefined. Okay, that's a good thing. It's a good thing because these aren't working. 
Um, that's a good thing. That means that I'm not passing it to the function, which I'm not. Look at that. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm like, why is this not fucking working? Bullshit. I hate this. I'm mad. See if this automatically runs it. Let's, see, let's look at this payload. Copy value. Yep. Now it actually added it. So you see how it added post apocalyptic hunter looking guy. So, all right, let's test this one out. Let's test this. It broke. I got a 502. How come this one got a course issue? It's fine. I, I don't know what the other ones worked. All right, let's try it again. So the hero's name is Jared. Oh, I got to patch up the hero. Here is the hero's name. Why am I doing it right here? So here is the hero's name. What's the hero name here? That's the hero name here. And I gotta pass the hero name here. And then I gotta pass the hero name here. Up at the top. Okay. All right. Here looks like a mage with a AK with a with a gun. Can they not do guns. I think that's a thing. Dang, that's crazy, guys. Follow uh, Jack Kuvac on LinkedIn. It went viral today. That's epic. Keep, dude, keep riding the wave. All right. Mage with a gun. That actually does look like a mage with a gun. Nice. Okay, so a cyberpunk world on the puppies. All right. Yeah, you can see those puppies down there. <laughs> All right, let's go next. This is our dungeon crawler. How is this even possible? Damn. Oh, dude, it's possible. Oh, I got to fix that screen. But All right, let's see. Oh, let me actually just do that right now. While it's loading. So let's go while it's loading. Let's see. Use the loading. I made a loading component. You see? See? We have a loading component. Let's see what this looks like. I like how it's like in all caps. What is this? All right. Greetings, adventure. You are Jared, a mage with a gun, a master of magic, and a skilled swordsman. You find yourself in a cyberpunk world filled with puppies, where high-tech gadgets and ancient magic coexist in a world of wonder and danger. Well, yes, your objective is to crawl through a dungeon filled with the treacherous obstacles and fearsome foes. It sounds super... <laughs> it sounds like a, a Dungeons & Dragons guy. Okay. You stand before the entrance of the dungeon, a massive stone structure with glowing runes etched into the walls. The air is thick with the scent of oil and smoke. And the distant hum of machinery echoes through the cavernous space. The puppies that inhabit this world scamper about your feet, their fluffy fur. I didn't tell it to do all this shit. Uh, <laughs> it's getting very creative. Um, their fluffy fur and Playful barks a stark contrast to the darkness 
and dangers that lives within. As you prepare to enter the dungeon, you feel a surge of excitement and anticipation. Your magical abilities and your trusty gun at your side, you're ready to face whatever challenges await you, you within. The fate of this world hangs in the balance, and, and you can save it from the evil forces that seek to destroy it. Oh, and then it gives in options. I actually don't um, want it to give options here. Oh, wait, I do. Let me think. No, I don't want it to give options here. Why did it give options? I like how it said one of the options is enter the dungeon and start your adventure. Enter the world and its puppies before beginning. Chat with the puppies to get a feel for the world. I think that's hilarious. I like that, but I, I want to do the options beforehand. Wait, do I want to do the options here? No, I want the options here. So this is good. So I have to explicitly tell it the, the format of the options. No, that's good. That's good what it did. Let me think. Yeah, that is good. I just I just need to make sure so I can parse the options and make it look a certain way. Um, nice. All right, cool. So the game instructions for the player and the initial choices. I need to say generate initial choices that was really good by the way that was like a very good output for the player to adhere to to choose right the initial think of no more than three or four choices format the choices in markdown format separated by star stars from um, items by stars <clears throat> That was like really good fucking description right there. I was like, I was like, whoa. Um, okay, so what is the output? It's in dot text. So it's dot output dot text. So I need to set the description. So I need to return response dot output dot text. And I need to parse out shit from it for now. Actually, well, no, I don't want to line. I don't want to. No, no, no. Item by number. One, two, three, four. By numbers. By their number. Itemized. By number. One, two, three, and four. We don't want an Oxford comma. That's so fucking cool, dude. Dude, AI is awesome. I mean, you know, it's pretty awesome. Um, that was a great. That was a, that was exactly the introduction I wanted it to do too. I was like, is this gonna actually have a good introduction? That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Good job. All right, so. Let's um make an H2 that's like um well, how should this be set up? Let's say we'll say if it's this we'll say new event new story your adventure mm -hmm. 
هو أم... Adventure game. No, adventure. I'll say your adventure. And then I'm gonna actually I'm gonna always show this. And then I'm gonna always show like the details of the adventure. And then I'll have like a P tag that's like be bold. And it's like hero. This is like hero name. Actually pretty fucking fun. It's pretty cool. Okay, and then this is like, and then I'll have the scenario. This is the world. Description. Scenario. And I need to, as you I need to look at the description and parse out the loot from the description. Yeah. I mean, I already just got, like, realized that, but what do I, else do I need? Hero and what well, the hero description right here. Oh. And that's it, right? Why is it? Oh. Then loading should not be true. Why is it loading? I don't know why it's loading, but that's fine. Um, oh, because it's it actually did start the adventure again. We could say we're gonna have like a loading like thing to say. And we could say like if loading and loading state index zero be like loading style and we'll make this font bigger a font size uh 32 pixels loading the story event What did that break? The bad. Put in the story event. And then this and then this stuff, I want this stuff to happen under. Which makes this H3. But your adventure. Okay. And then this one. Well. I need to go into the game loop CSS and then I say for the H2 in here, make it on side like 42 pixels. Oh, I didn't import this. Import styles slash game loop. CSS and then it's only just stuck in loading because I like kind of fucked that up. All right, and then all this is is white. It's all it's all this is H the H2, the H3, and the P tag are that like foreground white thing. I should just make everything have this. Loading the story event. Oh, it's uh, it's in an array. My bad. Uh, 
loading menu. I sure every time it refreshes it like does it. Your adventure. Loading the story event. Continuing, I'll say continuing your story. And then I want to say, if there's no previous action, let's say starting your journey. I'm a stickler about stuff like that. Starting. Oh, what did I mess up? Oh, previous action isn't fine. To previous action. Set the previous action. Let's say it. All right, let's play a game. Here's his name, Jared. Whatever you hear it looks like. Uh, a mage with a gun. This is super fun. Uh, this is one where I could like build. I could build something like this forever, dude. But I don't want to make it go on for too long. I'm just gonna get the game loop, and then and then we're, we're gonna. I'm gonna make the user make a choice, and then after the user makes a choice, I gotta see how long we're going. Three three sixteen. Okay. Wait, what? Oh. Hmm. All right. Major with a gun. Next. What world would your adventure take place in? Cyberpunk world with a ton of lions and puppies. Two favorite animals. Probably good that they don't ever see each other. <laughs> I don't think lions and puppies that I, that's not a thing that I want. I don't want to like have them meet. That's not something I'm I'm into. But oh, it's like a little cut off at the bottom. But I see it. I see it. Okay, cool. Let's go next. Let's say dungeon crawler. Save the princess. Okay. Oh, I gotta add the hero's image up there. Oh, it says starting, but it doesn't say hold on. Starting my bad. I need to put this in. Um No, this whole thing goes into this. Yeah. Starting your journey. I says, why is scenario Jared? Oh, my bad. Because I didn't fucking do that. It refresh. I'm not going like, to refresh it real quick. Okay, Jared, a mage with a gun. Starting your journey. Realize I'm not actually rendering this. Event description. The event description exists and it's not loading. The event description, then add the event description. And then let's make this. Inline styles aren't great, but we're trying to do this fast. Let me give this a font size of uh, 20 pixels. Okay. Um, <clears throat> event description is not a state. 
because I'm an idiot. It's story event description. And what else do I need to do to test that? Anything RPG? Create your hero, Jared. A, a hunter with a gun. Nice. He's got a gun. He's a hunter. Cool. Oh, I want to, before I continue, I want to show the hero's image here. The hero image. Is that getting passed in? Yeah, I'm passing it in. I don't even need to pass the in the world image. That happens when you just code shit fast. You just do shit. And you're not like that. <laughs> Let's make this. Um, I'm just doing inline. I, I don't do inline stuff. Okay. I'm just doing it here because it's just. I'm just. I, I just. You know. I just. What's a more bitchy thing than to be like? I just. I just. I just. I just. I just. I just that's like what you say before you get like sniped. All right. A cyberpunk world with dragons and um and a tree and no more trees. Let's generate that world. This dude, this is like so see see why we we set things up like this is starting to actually like kind of come together a little bit. I do want to make this one shorter, but I kind of want to fucking keep going, which is crazy. I I know, but oh wow, that looks amazing. Look at that dragon. Let's see how do I? Oh no. Right, let's go next. It's a dungeon crawler. Where you save the princess. Next. Okay, so we see the image of Jared. Starting the journey. You know, I see how we're making it atmospheric. I like discovered a word. Atmospheric. Boom. Everything's broken. Because I forgot to change this one thing. Hunter with a gun. Refresh thing here is just kind of kind of a pain in the ass, but I'm being honest. I get it though. It's like I get it. All right. Hunter with a gun. Cyber punk world with dragons and lions. Okay. Because that's the world we're in, it's the world we live in here. Gotta get to the game loop. I gotta I say what I do, okay? I mean I do what I say. <laughs> Guys, I say what I do. I don't know about you. That's fucking epic. I want to I want to zero zoom out of it though. I don't know why it's so zoomed in. Uh, oh, because it's 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 a square, right? That's that's fine. Well, I'll figure out how to make that make that good. We can um we can do do some stuff for that. Okay, dungeon crawler. Save princess. Starting my journey. You see where like like we just add okay eventually we we add loot we add companions we add like we just keep adding shit you see how this stuff works you just keep like you're pruning you're pruning you're pruning like we can see more of it now that looks so epic okay 
Welcome, Brave Rancher. My name is Jared Eskilf. It's not... Hold on a second. The first one was fucked up, but this one's good. I need to... Um... The new lines aren't showing. Hold on a sec. Um, this one's good. But it's like, welcome to the world of Siberia, futuristic realm. You're a skilled, you are Jared, a skilled hunter with a gun. You've been tasked with infiltrating the dragon guarded fortress to rescue the princess from the clutches of the evil sorcerer Merlinus. That's not very creative. They're like, let's just add us to Merlin. All right, nice. This is actually really cool, but I want to format it. They did um line item it as like one and two, three, four, which is good. But um so like I'm gonna so the user's just gonna type in one or two. And that's how we'll we'll get the action. So we'll do the action. Um I wanna format this right because hold on, so how do you how do you show new lines again in React? I don't know why it does it twice. Hold on a second. We want to do this. That's fine. Pretty sure. Because what's the default? No, the default is zero. And it sets. Are we even running set loop in there? say in greater than or equal to zero. Oh no. All right. Does that actually do that? Can you actually see line breaks when you do this? Holy shit. Nice. That's that's simple. White space line nice okay so so this is good i'm gonna add a little option for like the action option so we're gonna say i'm gonna add a div here this is gonna be game loop actions because we want to the game loop works because we actually do an action. So like, this reminds me of when I started working with computers in the eighties and RPG was all text-based and our imagination were the GPU. That's that's awesome, Maliki. Also glad to have you here. I was like, when I was making this, I'm like, I think Maliki will like this one. No, dude, I used to love text-based games as a kid. I used to love RPGs. I just love like RPGs. And uh, all right, so so the so now, and I'm gonna have so also, I'm not gonna do it now. Uh, I'll do it next stream, but I'm gonna do something where I um I like get loot items. So I detect. You, I'll just make a prompt to be like, check which loot items are in this event this story event and then check which companions are in the event and then check if this event is a fight and then if these things then should then generate a loot item and then generate you know what i mean same we were heavy in the dnd &D. i i was never into dnd &D, uh but i feel like that would be fun i used to play this game with my buddies i was like oh you're it was like you're in a room and and i was like always into playing that I would be like, it was a game where we'd just be like, you're in a room and like you have these items or whatever. And the other person has to like say what they would do. And then the other person says, like, no, that's like, you, you just like fucked. If, like, or like they just, it was really like a way of doing like DD, but it was only like you're in a room. I just realized that. I remember, where did that game? I think I just randomly thought of that game one day. Um, I think I don't know, but uh, all right, so this is gonna be a text input, very similar. We're actually gonna make the same text input as the other one. This is gonna be game loop 
action input. And hopefully this is only, this one I think is only going to be a two-parter. The front-end engineer AI one, that one's tough. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm going to, I want to maybe, maybe I'll do the part two tomorrow. Um, that one's a little intense. <laughs> it's, it's good though. I, I mean, it's like, obviously I think it's super fun, but like. It's like that one's a little intense. All right. So here we're just going to say pick like the number choice that you want to pick. That's that's all this one is. This is going to be like a width. I think this is a width of 100. Because it's just you're just saying and we could use it. We could even use a number input here. Um, yeah. We don't need to do that. And then we go in here and we'll say, then the button is going to be type next button, last name. My bad. And then we'll just say, Choose, choose, and then you'll say one. Right, the placeholder, like, one. Type your choice. You got to make it very clear when you're like doing UI stuff. I, I learned the hard way. UI stuff is like dumb clear. Like dumb, dumb, dumb it down, dumb it down more. However you want to dumb it down, dumb it down more than that. You don't even know how much you need to dumb it down. Like dumb it down so much that it's like a kind of annoying how dumb it is. Do choice, choose. Why is it like this? I'll make it even with the other one, but I think it's fine. Is that even? No. Well, I think this doesn't matter at all. So those you're doing something, you're like, this doesn't matter at all. Enter your choice one. It's kind of a big text box for that, but that's okay. All right. So I need to extract. No, I actually don't need to extract anything. I can use this result. So really, I just need another prompt that's like, this is how the game loop works. So we need another prompt that's not the story event. We don't need to have action event. And then this is the story event description all we need to pass in is a story event description and i think we should still do this stuff yeah so we'll still do this other stuff and we'll say Is it async function?
And it's going to pretty much be the same thing, but this part's going to be different. Where, well, we're also going to say here is the previous story event description. Other than the next story event and the next story choices. Oh, I should. We can just use the next choices in the story event. Yeah. So we could say you're a narrator for a role playing game. I'll give you the character, the world, the scenario. You have to generate the scenario and the choice the player just took. You have to generate. A description of what happened to the player based on their choice. Okay, so first think of first. Okay, using the story description that the user, the event, story event description that the user, that the player is making. Oh, I have to say what choice they made. Here is the player's choice. I actually don't need to do these things. I can just use the hero's name. Here's the player's choice, and then we just use the, we don't need all this. We use the event choice, and then the player's player choice, for player action. Here's the previous story event description that the player is making the ch their choice from using the story event description describe what would happen to the user to the player after making this decision be creative when describing the result of their decision. Write a detailed explanation of the following events that happen after the player's decision. Then I'll say, then write the write additional choices the player to choose from. Think of no more than three or four choices. Form of the choices, itemized by number. Okay, this is the loop, and this is the story event prompt. This is the story action event prompt, and then. We don't need to do this. We just pass the prompt and then we return it and we're good. We're good to go. So then we get to get, we have to export this and then we go to the game loop, we import it and then if the user, so the loop state is one now so say else if loop state index one 
set loading true. We can set loading the true at, at the top for everyone. Then const event description equals wait event. And I think I pass in the current event description. So story event description player action. I have to say, I say, I say player action instead of previous action. Player action. And then the input would just be value equals player action. And on change equals set player action. I'm doing that. I need to get the E, and then I've done this a million times. E, and then I need to E dot target. The, that value and then that into here. Okay. So I'm missing something. Yeah, I get the player action, I get something else in here. I get the hero name, right? Hero name. Player action. Set the player action, I get the event description, and then I do this. And then also we need to set after this, we can set player action back to null after we already use it in here. Okay. But what we need to do is here, when we run this choose button, it's on click. It's gonna set the state to one. Then when the state runs, we have to set This doesn't make sense. This index thing doesn't make sense. We set it to one to do the action. We never really do the zero one again. Oh, because I made this one for everyone. Sorry, I might be in super confused there. Um, we actually don't want to do this. I don't think we want to use effect for this. I don't think this loop has indexes. Yeah, this loop doesn't isn't an index thing. We just wanna um, we just wanna run a, this loop. We just wanna run this run loop function. We don't want to use effect. We don't need to have an if statement. We just do the run loop. That's it. And then this stuff right here dynamic so this event description thing we have an if statement it's like if there's a play if there's no player action meaning that there was no previous action we do the initial state yeah this is how it is then else we do And then we do this at the bottom. The run loop um, should only run, so the run loop should run, uh, there actually does, doesn't need to be a use effect to run the run loop right when it mounts. 
we do actually need to do that. But that's the only time. Like this time, it'll run. When we don't do this, we'll just run the loop again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this game of action thing. We only want this to show if there's a story description and it's not loaded. Okay. Run loop starts again. Start loading again. I think that's good. Okay. Let's test this out. Name Jared. Here looks like a hunter with a bow. That's got a little generic. We'll make the world not generic. Okay, yeah, it's a generic guy. It's fine. Okay, a cyberpunk world with dragons and lions roaming around. Loading and loading and loading and loading. Nice. That's fucking epic. Holy shit. That's awesome. Okay, let's go next. Save the princess. Very archetypical. Let's go. Oh, previous action. I'm still using that somewhere. It's in game loop. Where is that? Need to do player action. <laughs> let's do it all over again. It's fine. All right. Hunter with a, a gun and a sword. Guys are simple. You just like guns and swords. That's it. It's not complicated. We just like guns. Guns are cool. Swords are cool. We just like gear. Okay. A cyberpunk world with dragons and lions roaming around. Okay. Generating. That's fucking sick. All right, next. Dungeon crawler to save princess. Okay. We see it's like as you're playing, you get to see your scenario and everything. Okay, starting your journey. Okay. Welcome to Cyberpunk Dungeons, Jared the Hunter. You're a fearless adventurer armed with a powerful gun and a mighty sword. Your mission is to descend in the depths of the cyberpunk. It just did it again. Welcome to cyberpunk. Huh? All right. You've been, I got to fix that. Okay. You are a skilled hunter with a deadly gun and a sharp sword. And you've been tasked with the ultimate quest to save the princess from the clutches of the evil dragon Lord. In this gritty high tech world filled with lions and dragons, you must navigate through treacherous dungeons and fight off fearsome foes to reach the princess and bring her home safely. Your journey will take you through ab abandoned factories and dark alleys and find the fiery depths of the dragon lord lair. Okay, and now they're telling me you find yourself. Yeah, yeah okay. They've said make a choice. Enter the castle. I want to enter the castle. Okay. Let's, let's see if this works. So, so let's see. So now I made my choice to enter into the castle. Let's see. Let's see here. As Jared, you draw your sword and gun, ready to face 
the dragon lord's minions as you enter the castle the drawbridge creaks beneath your feet as you cross the porculus groans as it slowly closes behind you You hear the sound of armored boots on stone as guards rush to defend the massive stronghold you see a group of goblins their small rat-like faces twisted in hatred as they charge towards you brandishing crude weapons you raise your gun and sword ready to take the goblins you can choose to fire your gun at the goblins take them out with a hail of bullets Use your sword to take down the goblins one by one. Try to sneak past the goblins and make your way to the princess's tower. Or use your surroundings to take your advantage and look for a way to flank the goblins. I'm going to fucking fire my gun at the goblins. Let's actually do that. Let's choose that. This is working. We have a fucking choose your adventure RPG game. This is pretty fucking cool. Okay, continuing your journey. Remember, this is a... The world is cyberpunk with dragons and shit. <laughs> okay. And you're a hunter with a gun and a sword. Okay, Jared, as Jared, you raise your gun and unleash a hail of bullets at the goblins, taking them down with precise shots. The sound of gunfire echoes through the castle and the goblins fall to the ground defeated. You notice that one of the goblins wearing a small, intricately carved box around its neck. You take the box and examine it. You see that it's filled with a strange glowing dust. You suspect that this dust may be valuable and you decide to keep it for now. That's loot. That's a loot item. Once we add loot, we're going to detect that loot item and add that like, like right on the screen, like right here. We'll be like glowing dust we'll add that right there as you continue through the castle you come across a group of guards who are fiercely loyal to the dragon lord they're heavily armed and look ready to attack at a moment's notice you can choose this is an epic story um attempt to reason with the guards and convince them to let you pass use your sword to take down the guards and continue through the castle try to sneak past the guards and make your way to the princess's tower use your surroundings to your advantage and look for a way to flank the guards. What would you like to do, Jared? Um, dude, I don't know if I can. So the guards are like. I mean, like, should I sneak past the guards? Like, I should probably get the jump on them, right? I mean, this, these guards are harder than the goblins, it seems like. Yeah, like, I just fucking killed those goblins. Use your sword to take down the guards. I'm going to sneak past the guards. Let's see. Let's see what happens. You know we go into the princess's tower? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm going to just go to the princess's tower. I'm just going to sneak there up and up. Yeah, I I think uh, I killed the goblins, but now I, I'm going to try to just get... I'm just trying to get there. That's so cool that they automatically gave me loot. Okay, you try to sneak past the guards and make your way to the princess's tower. You carefully make your way around the perimeter of the castle, avoiding any areas that seem too well lit or populated. You manage to slip past the guards undetected and find yourself standing outside the princess's tower. Fuck yeah. <coughs> okay, so we'll see next time <laughs> whether I can actually save the princess. This is pretty fucking cool. So, a couple things. We need to get the loot fully finished. We need to get the companion events finished. Um, we need to get the... Uh, we need to get all that done visually as well. We need to... Um, what else do we need to do? That's the main thing. We need to do fights. So, we need to get a fight loop going. But so far, this is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> this is pretty great. All right. This has been fun. You got to keep building. That's it. I'll see it. Everyone.